Okay, so let's talk about the development here, because I, I didn't know this was going to be an issue. Um, it seems like the development of the provinces was on random, but here's the thing, I'm okay with that. I mean, I guess I can understand if you were rooting for a country like, I guess, Great Britain. It does seem like maybe Great Britain has a little bit less development. Since, uh, I, I, so I, I believe what happened was I started this campaign with random development on. Um, I might have done that because I was maybe thinking before this, before I had chosen to do the World War One start, uh, of doing another kind of custom nation start, another custom nation, kind of like Civ Five. Um, so I might have checked that, uh, that option on the menu. The weird thing is, I, I'm super okay with this, and I understand that there's some people that it's not, but this has probably been one of the most well-balanced and, like, yeah, well-balanced, and I, I feel like the, one of the best extended timeline uh, AI onlys that we've done, because it's 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 just so dynamic. There's there's just some things that things that are happening that have never happened before are in this series. So I I, I really I'm I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, I think that this is pretty cool, spe especially because you know we don't have the USA at number one all the time. You know that's it's great to see Russia with the number one development. They probably the USA will probably you know definitely catch up to Russia. There's almost no doubt in my mind that they will eventually. Uh, but it's just so fun. It's been like you know countries are falling and, and rising to power and then coming back to power. Uh, so I just wanted to make a comment about that. I, I really I'm I'm in love with it. I think this is really cool. I'm not saying that I'm going to do it again, but um, it really explains, I don't know, I thought this, I think this campaign has been the most well-balanced and the most entertaining, maybe possibly in, I don't know, we'll see. I don't want to make a comment just, just yet because, what are we, only 15 videos into this series, uh, but, I mean, so far, I'm, I'm in love with it. And I was very worried that after the World War II campaign, we were going to see something very similar happen in the World War I start, and I think it's safe to say that that is definitely not happening. So anyways, uh, there's a huge war that's going on uh, that I stopped at the end of the last video, and that is the USA versus the British. Now, the USA are not, they're not the war leaders, it's actually Mexico. So the United States are helping out their brothers to the south, I guess you could say, and uh, and they're going to bring, they're going to be at war with the British as well as most of the British uh, allies. So for instance, let's just go ahead and look at the diplomatic map mode here. Boom. The Japanese are the big ones though. The Japanese are the big ones, so obviously all of the Afri the British um, African colonies will be involved, as well as British India. Uh, but the Japanese, that might be really interesting because of the Philippines here. Because of, because I'm, I don't know exactly if the Japanese have any claims to these lands. No, not necessarily. Uh, but this is going to be interesting, as well as Australia is right here as well. Uh, maybe Hawaii might be invaded. So this might be an interesting World War II scenario with the Japanese and the USA. We'll see. Obviously, I don't know how Mexico plays into all that. And I don't know exactly what's going to happen since Mexico is the leader here. And all they want... Well, it's a, it's a Mexico imperialist war. I'm assuming all they want to do is kick out uh, the British from Belize. For one province, this massive world war is going to start. For this one province in Central America. Pretty crazy how things like that work out. Okay, so we need to keep this in mind. This war just started, so nobody has a significant advantage. There's another new war that just popped up. Chile versus Argentina. Um, they have... That is an interesting one. Actually, no. Because, well, yeah, it might be interesting. So Chile might try to get their cores back. Argentina obviously has cores in currently controlled uh, Chile lands. Either way, we might see something form out of the south. Now, Brazil seems like they're going to be the dominant power in South America. Uh, at this point, Brazil has kind of solidified their, their dominance, and I think it's mainly due to... Oh, wait a second. I forgot that you were involved in this war, too. Well, either way... Actually, yeah, they're going to be bringing in troops. I Actually, I don't know. I, I, I Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly how long it, go, it has been since Brazil was at war. A few years, for sure. I think. I can't remember. Okay, well, Mexico, either way, already has control over Belize, but because this is an imperialist war... That's that's what's going to make the difference. You can't if this was just a, a, a Casas Belli fabrication claim war or whatever, uh, then then that makes sense. But in Prilist War, that's going to be totally different. Oh man. Okay, so we've got another Russia, China, and Afghanistan um, conflict here. France is also involved. Okay, so the world's just going to just absolutely implode on itself once again. Uh, interesting that so Japan and. So Japan's in a messy situation because they're at war with the two most powerful nations in the world right now, Russia and the USA. They don't need to be too threatened by the USA. I want to know how 
this war, oh, you know what, Japan guaranteed, that's right, I forgot about that, uh, Japan guaranteed the independence of China, and Russia is trying to take advantage of that, uh, Afghanistan is also involved, because I'm guessing the same thing, I'm guessing the uh, Chinese were guaranteed by Afghanistan as well, oh, maybe they were just allied, yeah, never mind, they're just allied, okay, well, we're gonna see how this goes, now, usually, when it's just a one-on-one -on -one war like this, when it's just Japan versus Russia, uh, Russia has the advantage. And the problem is for the AI for Japan is that most of their regiments start off in the Japanese mainland. However, that's not the case this time around. I don't even know where the Japanese troops are at. Is France involved? I mean, France is involved, but France has nothing here in uh, Southeast Asia. So they might not pose too big of a threat. This is the only war that France is involved in, so they might send over troops this way. Is there any other way that the Chinese... You know, the no, the Japanese can't call on the British. This is not going to go too well for the Japanese, I don't believe. Oh, the French do have troops. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally, I totally missed that. Cracklord totally missed that there. How are you doing? Okay, you're going to go back, unseed your land. China's not at all ready for this. Can Yarkan get involved? Who are they allied to? No. Nobody significant. Nobody too significant, ju significant just yet. However, so because Japan is not technically, this was not declared for Japan, Russia might not take, they, I, they might take a few provinces here. Don't get me wrong. They might take a few provinces, a handful of provinces, but I, I don't think that they're going to be taking the most damage. I don't think. As well as keep in mind that Japan already has a majority of the development here that uh, China had before. There's, I mean, there's, yeah, you know what? All this other stuff is not, is nothing really like you know very low development so it's not going to help out the uh it definitely won't help out the russians that much if they take some lands away from the japanese that's going to hurt the japanese see where was the japanese regiment where, where was where were their armies at i thought they had a much bigger army than this now the question is what will germany do while these great powers are at war we've got the french technically involved in a war uh the british technically involved in a war and we might see kind of another uh, Central European power move here. Remember, Germany's got some, some amazing alliances with Portugal, Spain, Italy, Austria, Norway. I mean, they really have a good opportunity here of, uh, of maybe dominating someone. Well, who's guaranteeing Poland? I'm sure somebody's guaranteed. Yeah. So, yeah, this would be actually an excellent opportunity for Germany to declare war in Poland. While, and, and force Russia to fight a two-front war. Did that war already end? Yes, it did. And uh, they took three provinces away from Russia. I'm sorry, from Russia took three provinces away from Japan. And they took nothing from China. Maybe that was a smart move for the AI. Not calling in the British or the Germans or Chin. Declaring war on China and then just mainly attacking the Japanese. Still, that, that's, uh, that was a smart move by Russia, by the Russian AI. Chile has a pretty good advantage over Argentina right now with 62 war score. Mexico at negative 4. And we have uh, Yemen and Naj going at it in the Arabian Peninsula. This might be interesting, especially seeing that you know, Turkey's not doing as well as they once were. We'll see if uh, maybe Turkey gets involved in some of the politics, some of the uh, dipl uh, diplomacy. in this area, and, and how much they lose, too. Or will Persia start to actually do something here? I'd love to see Persia attack the... Uh, the Arabia, Arabian Peninsula, because it's totally open for an attack. But, you know, Yemen might take most of Naj, and uh, they might be able to consolidate their power a little bit more. Are we seeing anything off the coast here? I know that, you know, obviously the United States regiments are here going through Mexican territory, kind of protecting them. So if Brazil did decide to get military access through Panama or Colombia, actually both of those, they'd have to, which they actually didn't. They're not going to engage. Brazil wants nothing of, uh, of this. I think that they're, you know, you think about, think about it from Br Brazil's perspective. I mean, they have to worry. There's a massive force in the United States and, and in Mexico, all in North America. All this stuff's going down. And then you've got a small conflict, but still a significant one between Chile and Argentina. And, uh, you know, if Chile ends up taking most of this stuff away, then they could possibly ally to, I don't know, they're not allied to anybody else, but maybe Peru. They could form kind of a makeshift coalition against the Brazilians. Because that's really the only way that uh, Brazil is going to get stopped right now in South America. Uh, Tibet now fighting Yarkan, Bhutan, and Can, Kangra? Kong, Congra. I'm going to say Congra there. I'm going to guess. I'll try to pronounce some things. Pr pronounce, sorry. 
<laughs> if I can't even pronounce pronunciate, I can't even, I can't even say words correctly. I make up words. So I don't know if I should be trying to uh, actually pronounce real words. Pronunciate. I've always said it like that. That's the funny thing is I've always said that. I've always said pronunciate and that's not right apparently. So <laughs> it, it was kind of crazy to me that when everyone was started laughing at me, I was like, oh, wait, that's really? I've always said that like my entire life. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go and check in on what's going on here. Oh, did, oh wow, that war ended really quick. Yarkan just grabbed a whole bunch of... Oh, they ate up... Uh, oh, I see. You ate up Tibet. So Yarkan might become the new China, possibly. Is Japan attacking the Phil... Oh, that's where they were. You were attacking the Philippines. That's... Okay. So that was kind of messed up by Russia. A smart move at the same time, but Japan was uh, clearly uh, really distracted. Wait a second. Would they be going after Hawaii now? No. No occupations of Hawaii just yet. Still pretty interesting to see. Now, do they have desire here? Let's go and check on some of the desire, because it's been a while since we've checked in on this. Japan mainly desires Russian lands at the moment. Obviously, this can change at any instant. But I don't know. That doesn't seem like a smart move. Whoa, Russia. Did you go to war with somebody? Oh, this is interesting. So Russia wants all of Persia. They want Austria. They want Germany. They want Yarkan. They want Japan. This seems like an obvious coalition that should form to protect itself against Russia. Uh, I don't believe that Russia has too much aggressive expansion at the moment. Jeez, I always hate that. Uh, well, I've got aggressive. I've got, there we go. Coalition. Um... Wait a second, that's not showing us. There there we go. No, Russia at the moment has no aggression aggression expansion a, a, aggressive expansion. Well, I mean that makes sense. They haven't really been to war in a while, so that does make kind of a bit of sense. 1998 slowly approaching modern day. Oh wow. Looks like uh the U United States probably uh, landed on Ireland briefly there. Yeah, that's uh, that was that's kind of shocking. Did this war end down this way? Yes, it did. La Plata was released. Oh no, Bolivia. I think. Wait, was wasn't it like that? I think it was like that. I think I'm just getting confused. Okay, well Chile is looking good. Chile is looking good down this way. We'll see if they can get up some sort of a positive opinion with someone like Peru. Let's go to the opinion map mode. Um, the Peruvian opinion of Chile is not the best, but it's Chile that's the problem. Oh, their arrival. Ah, that's... Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's not good. Okay, well, maybe nothing will form out of that. Chile could probably eat up some of these lands like Bolivia and Paraguay. Maybe even Uruguay. Let's see here. Is there anybody that is allied? <coughs> oh, my gosh. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, No, nothing right now. Oh, my gosh. Mexico and the United States are getting dominated right now. But what would they lose? The only thing I could see, honestly, being... Oh, Russia, Persia. I'm so surprised that nobody guaranteed Persia. How is nobody guaranteed Persia? And what will Turkey do in the situation? What will British India do? I know that they're fighting a pretty big war with the United States. What does Persia have here? What does Persia have? And are they... Okay, they're not Western. They're still Muslim technology. Let's go ahead and get out of this uh, desired map mode. Now, most of the Russian troops are in Siberia, as well as keep in mind that I actually think that the French in Southeast Asia ended up doing more damage and getting a little bit more war score than Russia themselves. So this is where Germany should strike. Again, Germany has an opportunity to strike, unless they have a truce. No, they've got no truce at all. They should try strike against either Poland or Lithuania, at least. Who are only guaranteed by... Oh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Poland is guaranteed by Germany. Lithuania is guaranteed by Germany. Well, that's kind of a problem. Actually, that's not a problem because you have an immediate border anyways. You can go to war with Russia as it is right now. I that's actually kind of smart for the AI to guarantee these two. I, but at the same time, Germany needs more Germany needs more land, so maybe maybe not the smartest. Probably not the smartest. Negative 17 war score now for Mexico. We've got more consolidation of power here in uh, Eastern Asia. I'm sorry, Eastern, Western China, I should say. 
So they might be starting to, yeah, they're trying to dip into kind of British India territory. I mean, Nepal's never really been a part of British India, I don't believe, but uh, still approaching British territory. And if one of these countries can end up dominating here in Western China, uh, that'll be interesting. Interesting to see a new power like this, to see Japan and maybe like Yarkand completely di divide up this area. Now, Yarkand has no alliances except for, yeah, some smaller powers, but they've got no great power alliances. Not yet. How's Persia doing? Persia actually moving up through Central Asia a little bit here. Oh, that that's not good. Yeah, you're going to get dominated. Russia's got some major advantages. I'm guessing military tactics. We could probably check in on that if they engage in another battle. Yeah, Russia with only 44 stack. What's, what's going on here? They've got a military uh, tactics advantage. Can't really look at morale, but they've got more discipline. I think that that could be... And just the numbers overall could be making the biggest difference. Well, depending on what they wanted... What do they want exactly? They actually don't want that much. Persia might not lose everything. It might not be a, a massive disaster. Mexico now a 25 war score, negative 25 war score. So uh, are they over here in Central America? Is the, is the British or anybody here? No. Uh, I'm guessing due to possibly blockades. Uh, occupied Great Britain. Occupied by Great Britain. Oh, Oh, we're seeing regions outside, outside of North America being occupied. Well, actually, this is not contributing that much to the war score, though. It doesn't, it doesn't look like that, at least. Zero, 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 point three. Uh, it might be maybe a time bonus because Mexico's been at war with the British for a, a while and nothing really has happened. Imperialist war, I know that imperialist wars can be pretty... Um, pretty, what's the word? Stern? Pretty, uh, messed, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But Imperialist Wars are not the best if you cannot get to their capital. You want to get a core, you know, they, you want to occupy a, a pretty good chunk of that country with that Casus Belli. Okay, so Nepal still exists. Bhutan only grabbed, like, three provinces. Interesting that Yarkan is allowing them to do this, too. Wasn't really expecting that. January... January 1st, 2000. All right. So we've made it to January 1st, 2000. Persia ended up piecing out here. Losing only a little chunk of land, which is kind of interesting. Um, and is France planning on, on anything? Well, France is doing pretty good right now because they're allied to Turkey and Russia. Even though they are they lost their alliance with the British, they're okay. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.